Hello all, uh, I'm going to review chapter 15, the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so uh, let's compare the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. So first of all, the somatic nervous system includes both sensory and motor neurons, and the sensory are related to pain, touch, temperature, proprioception, which is a sense of self-position, like in your joints, um, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and equilibrium. And then the motor neurons uh, innervate skeletal muscles. Uh, with the autonomic nervous system, it receives input from the sensory receptors located in various organs, blood vessels, muscles, and nervous system. And so uh, this graph at the bottom shows uh, the preganglionic and, and postganglionic axons uh, in the different nervous systems. So the somatic nervous system um, has this, this, this long uh, motor neuron that releases acetylcholine to activate skeletal muscle contraction. Uh, with the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic division um, goes through a ganglion. And so there's the preganglionic axons um, into a sympathetic ganglion and then activates a postganglionic axon, which then will uh, activate, uh, release of norepinephrine, which can um, initiate autonomic functions with uh, blood pressure or glands. Uh, there's also um, the release of acetylcholine uh, by the preganglionic uh, axons in the adrenal medulla, which is the endocrine organ. It's going to dump uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine into the bloodstream where it circulates to find its effector. And then the parasympathetic division uh, releases acetylcholine at the uh, ganglion to um, activate various effectors uh, that uh, will support uh, parasympathetic activity. So the axon of a single myelinated somatic motor neuron extends from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscle fiber it innervates. And you can imagine these are very long motor neurons. They can be very long motor neurons. Um, and so in, this, in the CNS, we've got the cell body with uh, the pre preganglionic neuron um, synapsing at the autonomic ganglia, and then your postganglionic neuron, which uh, innervates the effector organs. So most autonomic motor pathways consist of two motor neurons, a preganglionic neuron. And so uh, it's got a cell body in the CNS, and its axon extends into the autonomic ganglia. And then there's the postganglionic neuron, which has its unmyelinated axon extending from the ganglion to the effector. Okay, we've got uh, three different um, charts here, two for the sympathetic and one for parasympathetic. And so uh, the autonomic, autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic divisions, which is, which is referred to as fight or flight, okay, because it stimulates alertness, metabolism, ready for uh, flight uh, or fight. And then the sympathetic, which is more rest and digest. Uh, so we can see the sympathetic um, motor neurons uh, synapse at the autonomic ganglia, the sympathetic ganglia, and then activate a postganglionic neuron, which then is going to uh, or can release norepinephrine on various glands or, or the heart or smooth muscle um, to regulate those effectors for fight or flight. And uh, it also activates the adrenal medulla, uh, which is an endocrine organ, uh, to release. Uh, norepinephrine or epinephrine, which further supports this fight or flight response. So for rest or digest, we've got the parasympathetic, uh, and there is a parasympathetic ganglion that um, the preganglionic neuron synapse to, and then activate a postganglionic neuron, which then is going to um, dump acetylcholine on glands, muscles, really the uh, the same uh, organs that the sympathetic uh, postganglionic neurons activated. Uh, but this is going to be um, to kind of put the brakes on the heart rate or the, the brakes on uh, increase in blood pressure. So it's going to 
promote uh, rest and, and digestion. So if we summarize this, um, the sensory input from the somatic nervous system is from uh, the senses, somatic senses, and special senses like uh, visual and hearing. Um, the control of motor output uh, for the somatic nervous system is voluntary. Okay, uh, it does come from the cerebral cortex, but there is some contributions from the basal ganglia, cerebellum, brainstem, and spinal cord. And the motor neuron pathway, there's one neuron, uh, the somatic motor neuron ex extends from the CNS directly to the effector. And the neurotransmitters are acetylcholine only. And the effectors will be skeletal muscle. Remember, this is going to be uh, conscious control and the response is gonna be contraction of skeletal muscles. If we uh, then look at the autonomic nervous system, the sensory input is mainly uh, interoceptors, uh, which are uh, receptors uh, in organs and glands that give feedback, um, and some are from somatic or special senses. So the control of the motor output is involuntary, and this comes from the hypothalamus, the limbic system, brainstem, spinal cord, and uh, just a limited amount from the cerebral cortex. So the neuronal pathway is a two neuron system with a preganglionic neuron extending from the CNS uh, to the ganglion where the postganglionic neuron is activated. And this uh, will innervate the uh, effector, whatever visceral effector it is. Um, alternately, preganglionic neurons may extend from the CNS to synapse with chromaffin cells at the adrenal medulla to activate this endocrine pathway. The neurotransmitters for the autonomic nervous system um, are all acetylcholine for sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, ganglion. Most sympathetic postganglionic neurons release norepinephrine, and there are some that release acetylcholine but all parasympathetic neurons release acetylcholine. And the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla will release epinephrine and norepinephrine. So the effectors for the autonomic nervous system are smooth muscle, uh, cardiac muscle, and various glands. And the responses are going to be contraction of smooth muscle, which is going to, one of the things, increase blood pressure, um, increase or decrease the rate and force of contraction of the heart, and uh, increase or decrease secretions um, of glands. So let's look at the uh, anatomy of the autonomic motor pathways. But each division has two motor neurons, the preganglionic, uh, which the cell body uh, is in the central nervous system, and in the postganglionic, where the cell body and dendrites are located in the autonomic ganglia um, outside of the central nervous system. Now in the sympathetic division, the cell bodies of preganglionic neurons are in the lateral horn of the gray matter in uh, the 12 thoracic and first two to three lumbar segments. And you can see that with this figure, we've got our uh, thoracic uh, one through 12 and our lumbar one through three, but we're just looking at one through two. Um, we can see the uh, preganglionic neurons um, synapsing with uh, the either we, we've got this uh, superior cervical ganglion, the middle cervical, inferior cervical, um, and and various other uh, ganglions that are from the thoracic. And you can see the effector organs um, depending on the uh, postganglionic neuron, uh, but it can vary from uh, the lacrimal gland uh, that um, it's see, or the heart muscle, uh, breathing, vasoconstriction, vasodilation, uh, the liver, the gastrointestinal system, uh, the kidneys, and then uh, urinary system. So the anatomy of the autonomic motor pathways. So in the parasympathetic division, the cell bodies of the preganglionic neurons are in the nuclei of four cranial nerves. And this is going to be the uh, cranial nerves three, 
7, 9, and 10 in the brainstem. And let's see. So we can see the terminal ganglia in gray. Uh, we've got ciliary, um, pterygoid palatine, uh, submandibular, otic ganglion, and various effectors. And this is going to be parasympathetic. So just remember, it's going to be rest or digest. So the activities it's going to support are, are going to be um, not the opposite of fight or flight, but definitely um, to, to not support fight or flight, but to por support uh, more resting and digesting. Okay, so let's look at the autonomic ganglia of both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. There are two major types of sympathetic ganglia. There's a sympathetic trunk ganglia and the, the prevertebral ganglia. So the sympathetic trunk uh, lies in a vertical row on either side of the vertebral column. We've got uh, sympathetic trunk. Um, and then the prevertebral ganglia lie anterior to the uh, vertebral column and close to the large abdominal arteries. So that would be here, if you can see my mouse. Um, so this autonomic pathway uh, is showing uh, effectors like the heart, um, blood vessels, and I'm sure there's other uh, smooth muscle effectors here. Okay, so anatomy of autonomic motor pathway. So after axons of sympathetic preganglion neurons enter the sympathetic trunk ganglia, they can connect with postganglionic neurons in one of four ways. Okay, so uh, once again, we're here at the spinal cord uh, through the anterior root, your preganglionic uh, neuron. The first thing is the axon may synapse with the postganglionic neuron uh, at the first ganglion it reaches. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two, an axon may ascend or descend to a higher or lower ganglion before synapsing with its postganglionic neuron. Uh, number three, the axon may continue without synapsing through the sympathetic trunk ganglion to end at the prevertebral ganglion and synapse with postganglionic neurons. And then finally, an axon may also pass without synapsing through the sympathetic trunk ganglia and a prevertebral ganglia, and then extend to the adrenal medulla, where it's gonna activate uh, secretion of, of hormones um, into the uh, endocrine system. Okay, so anatomy of autonomic motor pathways. The Abdomen and pelvis contain major autonomic plexuses, which are often named after the artery that they are um, associated with or uh, distributed next to. So the motor pathways are the celiac plexus, the superior mesenteric plexus, the inferior mesenteric plexus, the renal plexus, and the hypogastric plexus. So you can see each of these uh, plexuses, if that's a word, um, is associated with a, with a very large blood vessel. Okay, if we look at the anatomy of the autonomic motor pathways, um, the cell bodies of the sympathetic preganglionic neurons are in the lateral gray horn of the thoracic segments, okay, uh, and also the first two lumbar segments. And so we, we kind of talked about that in a slide previously, but the paired sympathetic trunk ganglia are anterior and lateral to the vertebral column. And usually there are a, like two cervical, 11 or 12 thoracic, four to five lumbar, four to five sacral sympathetic trunk ganglia and then there's one coccygeal ganglion. So the cell bodies of the parasympathetic preganglionic neurons are located in the brainstem and nuclei, and this is the lateral gray matter, 
of the second through the fourth sacral segments of the spinal cord. Then for outflow, there's cranial sympathetic outflow that extends from the brainstem uh, in four cranial nerves and sacral parasympathetic outflow that extends from the second through fourth sacral spinal nerves. Okay, autonomic nervous system neurotransmitters and receptors. And we kind of uh, talked a little bit about norepinephrine and acetylcholine. Uh, let's go into a little more detail. But based on the neurotransmitter they produce and release, autonomic neurons are considered cholinergic or adrenergic. So cholinergic uh, uses acetylcholine. And uh, these the receptors for acetylcholine are either nicotinic receptors or muscarinic receptors. Uh, with the adrenergic neurons, uh, they release norepinephrine. And uh, there is just one set of norepinephrine receptors. OK, so let's see. Uh, sympathetic division innervation to most effector tissues. So we've got activation of this postganglionic neuron um, to release norepinephrine uh, at looks like a neuromuscular junction and uh, also uh, acetylcholine can bind muscarinic receptors in glands to activate them okay so let's just take a look at these receptors um, so the cholinergic receptors this is for acetylcholine come in uh, two flavors, nicotinic and muscarinic. And so nicotinic, there is a neuronal and a non-neuronal, which is mostly skeletal muscle. And uh, the effectors are going to be the adrenals, immune cells, the CNS, and certain ganglia. The muscarinic are a little more diverse. We've got M1 through M5. And uh, their, the expression of these receptors is, is uh, various, in various locations. And then the adrenergic receptors, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta, which differentiate uh, into a few different isoforms. So let's take a look at what uh, activation of these receptors does. And so remember um, the Sympathetic is fight or flight, and the parasympathetic is rest or digest. So activation of these receptors is going to support um, this activity. So let's look at the heart for uh, sympathetic. The receptors are beta-1 and beta-2. Um, there's also a dopamine receptor. But activation of these uh, adrenergic receptors will increase heart rate, increase force of contraction, conduction velocity, uh, excitability. Uh, then the alpha ones, the alpha one adrenergic receptors, um, increase force of contraction. And in the arteries, you've got beta one uh, adrenergic receptors, which uh, produce vasodilation in the coronaries, which is going to increase blood flow. The beta twos are going to support vasodilation uh, of skeletal muscle. Uh, then um, further in the arteries, the alpha-1 and alpha-2 are going to support vasoconstriction. And this is to uh, shunt blood to whatever system is needed for fight or flight. The veins also have a, a number of um, adrenergic receptors that uh, the alpha-1s support vasoconstriction, the beta-2s for vasodilation. Um, in the lung, you have bronchial dilation with beta-2 and bronchial constriction with alpha-1. Uh, the GI tract, remember, it's fight or flight, so we do not want to rest or digest. So activation of alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-2 is going to decrease GI motility. And uh, the pancreas, uh, insulin production is going to um, increase with the beta-2s or with the alpha-1 and 2s, it'll decrease insulin production. In the kidneys, the beta receptors will activate renin secretion, which affects blood pressure. 
and the liver, the beta-2 receptors uh, support glycogenolysis, which is going to um, free up glycogen so it can uh, create lots of ATP to support the uh, muscular contraction. So let's now go to the rest or digest portion of the parasympathetic. Um, in the heart, there are uh, the M2, so this is the muscarinic receptors, M2s, which are gonna decrease heart rate and decrease force of contraction. Okay, there's another muscarinic receptor in arteries, which uh, supports the vasodilation in the skin, skeletal muscle, pulmonary and coronary circulation. In the lungs, there are uh, M1 and M3, which are going to support bronchial um, constriction and stimulation of certain secretions that, uh, that are gonna support this. In the GI tract, um, this is parasympathetic, so we're looking to activate motility, uh, relax the sphincters, and stimulate secretions to support digestion. And in the liver, there is a muscarinic receptor that uh, forms glycogen. So this is really the opposite of glycogenolysis. This is glycogen synthesis, where the glycogen is going to be mopped up and, uh, and stored as glycogen. Okay, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. Let's take a quick look. So both come from different regions of the CNS. The sympathetic from the thoracolumbar regions and the parasympathetic from the cranial sacral regions. So the ganglia are in, in different locations. Sympathetic ganglia are close to the spinal cord in a chain. You can see here it's coming off of the thoracic uh, and lumbar. And sympathetic... Uh, the postganglionic fibers are very long. So in parasympathetic, um, it's closer to the target organs and consequently the postganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic system are very short. Uh, but there is postganglionic branching in the sympathetic. Um, there's multiple organs that can be activated at once. Uh, parasympathetic, however, doesn't have as much branching as the sympathetic. And so you have various effectors here, the eye, the salivary glands, heart, lungs, stomach, pancreas, liver, bladder, and genitals. This is on the parasympathetic side. Um, and the sympathetic, uh, the eye, the skin, salivary glands, lungs, heart, stomach, pancreas, liver, adrenals, bladder, and genitals. Okay, so let's look at the effects of uh, stimulation. Um, firstly, on the heart, okay? Um, so the sympathetic stimulation is gonna increase heart rate and force of contraction. This is gonna increase cardiac output. The parasympathetic sympathetic division is going to decrease the rate, the, um, the rate of the heart and decrease the force of contraction. Blood vessels, the sympathetic stimulation is going to support vasoconstriction, uh, and this is going to increase blood pressure. The um, parasympathetic stimulation supports vasodilation, and the lungs uh, sympathetic supports uh, bronchial dilation, whereas the parasympathetic is bronchial constriction. Digestive, sympathetic is associated with decreased motility, contraction of sphincters, and uh, a change in digestive secretions, a decrease. Whereas the parasympathetic, digestive is going to increase motility, relax the sphincters, and stimulate digestive secretions. Urinary bladder is going to relax in the sympathetic stimulation. Uh, and that's going to allow accommodation of urine. Uh, the parasympathetic will contract, and that will stimulate emptying of the bladder. Uh, the eyes, sympathetic response is to dilate the pupils, let as much light in. Parasympathetic is to constrict the pupils. Um, when you're talking about glycogen in the liver, um, sympathetic stimulation 
results in glycogenolysis or the release of glycogen so that we can uh, break down and produce ATP. Um, but there seems to be no effect of the parasympathetic on, on the liver. And then adipose, uh, lipolysis or the release of, of fatty acids is going to be activated with sympathetic. And this is uh, to produce energy so that you can produce more ATP to get more contraction. And there's no effect on the parasympathetic stimulation on adipose cells. Okay, this is a very busy slide. Let's see if we can make our way through it. So we've got the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems showing uh, the various ganglion, preganglionic and postganglionic fibers with the, uh, the effectors that they innervate. And um, you can see that the adrenergic or the sympathetic system uh, activates a lot of these pathways, whereas the parasympathetic inhibits these pathways. Generally, um, I really do revert to fight or flight or rest or digest and think about what has, what has gone in my body during these responses. Okay, integration and control. So functions such as heart rate and force of ventricular contraction, uh, blood pressure, con blood pressure uh, and blood vessel constriction or uh, dilation um, that occur, they all pass through an autonomic reflex arc. So the reflex arc is composed of a receptor, okay, a stimulus that activates a receptor, a sensory neuron, uh, an integration center, then a motor neuron, and an effector. And so if we if we go through this, uh, we've got our 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 sensor, um, preganglionic uh, neuron. Um, going through the dorsal root ganglion, synapsing in the central nervous system, um, and, and then we've got axons that go out to their effectors. Let's see what we have. Okay, so there are various uh, ways that the nervous system maintains homeostasis, and this is always a popular question on exams. So with of the integumentary system, sympathetic nerves of the ANS uh, control contraction of smooth muscle attached to hair follicles and uh, secretion uh, of sweat. The skeletal system, there are pain receptors in bone tissue that warn of bone trauma or damage. And the muscular system, uh, somatic motor neurons receive instructions from motor areas of the brain and stimulate contraction of the skeletal muscles. Endocrine, the hypothalamus uh, secretes hormones and uh, also the adrenal medulla and the pancreas release hormones. Cardiovascular uh, system, uh, the force of contraction in the heart rate is affected. With lymphatic and immune, um, Certain neurotransmitters will help immune responses, and activity in the nervous system may increase or decrease immune responses depending on your response. The respiratory system, um, the breathing rate, breathing depth is affected. And digestive, the uh, parasympathetic stimulates many digestive processes. Uh, urinary, the uh, emptying or relaxation of the bladder um, is a response. And then reproductive, there are a number of sexual behaviors that are regulated. Right. Okay, so let's look at a couple of disorders. Um, it's autonomic dysreflexia. And so this is a, an abnormal overreaction of the autonomic nervous system to stimulation. And it could be spontaneous changes in heart rate, uh, excessive sweating, high blood pressure. So you're talking overstimulation of the autonomic 
uh, nervous system. And this is going to affect uh, blood pressure, it's going to affect, um, as, as I said, sweating, it says comfort, and uh, the heart rate will, will change the blood pressure, but also it's going to affect uh, vasoconstriction, which will further increase blood, pr blood pressure. So with autonomic dysreflexia, hypertension is a common outcome. Then there is a Raynaud's phenomenon. Uh, it's a condition that causes the blood vessels in the extremities to narrow, and sometimes the fingers get purple. Okay, so the episodes or attacks uh, affect the fingers and toes, um, sometimes the ears and the nose, but uh, what, what's going on is there's a decrease in intravascular pressure. Okay, so this is the, the opposite of what we just saw. Um, so there's low blood pressure, a little bit of atherosclerosis, um, let's see, there is uh, endogenous vasoconstriction, and so this is what's going to lead to decreased blood flow. You also have arterial occlusions, maybe thrombus or embolism, but the end result is you're going to have decreased circulation to your fingers, your fingers are going to turn blue, it is a blood disorder. Okay, that is the autonomic nervous system. Uh, I will see you in class for uh, an extension of it.